Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 29, Part 12. So, how are things? Caden said, looking between Twilight and Celestia. Celestia looked at Twilight with a yielding nod, offering to let Twilight answer. Better, someone at least. It's just been a lot to come to terms with. Twilight offered a mostly sincere smile to Celestia. I... what we had is lost. Celestia's expression fell. The mask was still in control of her sister's expression, so even that was still a manipulation. Twilight's smile warmed. But I'm willing to see what we can build on a new foundation of truth. Celestia returned the smile. The glimmer of hope and relief in her eyes were completely honest as far as Aluna could see. Thank you, Twilight. She extends her hoof to Twilight, who after a moment accepted it. Luna didn't even need to ask what Cadence was seeing. Her smile revealed everything that she needed to know. Now that the main point of the meeting seemed to at least have been achieved amicably, Celestia motioned for every pony to enjoy the meal. Luna smiled. Twilight was demolishing the food. There was not a single item that she had not sampled. Even the things that she always shied away from. Like the fish-based Pegasus dishes, the mineral-based Earth Pony delicacies, or the single thestral additions of the meal. An inoffensive-looking pastry whose contents were made from a little blood and meat. Even some crystal berries made an appearance in the form of a pie. Shining Armor just watched in apparent horror as the sister was on the verge of becoming a natural disaster. The playful glare Twilight shot back made him laugh. Cadence had a giggle with her hoof. Careful, Twilight. You might end up as big as Celestia if you keep eating like that. Twilight looked a little sheepish, and Celestia offered her niece an unamused look. As the youth of today say, oh, lighten up, Tia. Luna half laughed. Celestia snorted and crossed her forelegs, looking a few thousand years younger. Luna chuckled and threw one of the marshmallows from the crystal berry pie at her. Celestia just stared at the incoming projectile, seeming to disbelieve its existence. The impact left a small purple mark on Celestia's formerly pristine coats. Something flashed in Celestia's eyes. Luna readied her defenses as her sister's war mind readied its weapons, about a quarter of the remaining dishes on the table. Twilight grabbed a hoof full of her favorites and raised a shield around herself. Shining Armor followed suit just in time as the first barrage began. Luna could hear Cadence laughing as she sheltered in her husband's protection. The battle was fierce, and no food-based projectile was left unutilized. The servants arrived with the desserts and rapidly began cleaning the room. They would not meet any pony's eyes. Cadence had done double duty with her grooming spell, leaving both sisters with her normal, impeccable appearance. Luna was returning her sister's glare and grin both. Neither would admit the other had won, so this most ridiculous of stare-offs was still ongoing. I'll just have to eat all the cake. Twilight interjected, giving Luna a wink. That would not dearest! Celestia shouted, looking to Twilight before blushing, if only a fraction of a shade and only for the blink of an eye. Luna would have to reward Twilight for it had been a long time since she had seen her sister lose her composure like that. By the star she had needed this release, this moment of fun. Huzzah! Luna called out. Victory's mine, but the cake is not. Celestia stuck out her tongue, the whole cake suspended in her golden aura. The meal was over, and every pony else made their way for the room. Luna gestured for Twilight to wait. Once the doors had closed, Luna was alone with Twilight. Luna reached her wing around Twilight. So, did any of Celestia's guard happen to strike your fancy? Luna could tell Twilight was divided, probably between the temptation and the perceived impropriety. Oh, we are being hosted by my sister. You would be more than welcome to partake of one if you'd like. Luna added to the temptation side of the conversation as she started preening Twilight's wings. Twilight responded to the ministrations. Why can I not just partake of you? She said, looking into Luna's eyes with obvious desire. Luna pulled back just slightly. Uh-uh. Cadence would not approve until after our wedding. And me partaking of a guard wouldn't be disapproved of? Twilight pointed out the obvious. No, it would simply be using one of your privileges of being royalty. Speaking of advantages of being royalty, I have a present for you. Luna purred into Twilight's ear. Luna reached out with her senses, locating her intended gift. Her shadow magic reached out to embrace her target. A pool of shadow poured into the area just in front of Luna and Twilight's. From it rose Luna's most recent night chosen, her exotically beautiful body suggestively wrapped up in ribbons of shadow. Twilight's eyes devoured the pony before her. They seemed to be taking in the sight of Candace's body and lingered on her bound up, but still obviously magnificent wings. Twilight's muscles tensed, wanting to lunge at her gift. Flames danced in her mane and only Luna's raw strength held the young alicorn in place. Candace looked down at the binding wrapping her up. She seemed to relax as she saw their reason for being. She then looked to see Twilight being held and preened by Luna. I offer you your first guard, Luna said, whispering into Twilight's ear. And we all know that a princess's guards are a part of her harem. 
Luna looked at Candace, her eyes telling her gift. I've done my part. It's your turn now. Candace only took a moment to gather herself and look at Twilight. Oh, hello Twilight. I thought I might be meeting you soon, but this is not how I thought it would occur. Candace was obviously surprised. Luna could sense Candace trying to reach out and modify the bindings. She could see that she wasn't trying to dispel them, but rather simply modify them. Luna reached out and helped her Night Chosen, knowing that she was still too new to having Thestral magic to accomplish the task. The bindings loosened themselves a bit, allowing her to move around. The ends of the ribbons now floated around in the breeze. The door to the dining room suddenly opened with unreasonable force. Blue Blood's voice called into the room as he strode in. Auntie, I must speak with you immediately. Looking at the sight before him, he stopped in his tracks. What is going on here? He demanded. Twilight's eyes fixated on the intruder, a low growl emanating from her. Luna cut in. This intrusion is most unwelcome. Her strength being the only thing currently restraining Twilight's. Blue Blood nodded, and as he turned to leave, he uttered, At least you're finally putting those hybrids in their place. They all deserve to be tied up and tried for treason against nature. Twilight's power surged, her horn lighting. Blue Blood vanished in a flash of magenta light. The doors closed as quickly as they had been opened, and a pulse of magic sealed the room from both sound and invasion. Luna just wondered at this point where Twilight had teleported him to. Candace, for her part, looked back to Twilight and Luna, her face showing an obvious distaste for Blue Blood's tribalism. Her mood was obviously negatively affected by the interruption. Twilight took some time to do her breathing technique and calm herself down. She muttered to herself, At least I didn't kill him. And what, pray tell, did you do to him? Luna asked. I dropped him in the fountain at the center of the garden maze. It was either that, or off the side of the canterhorn. Twilight stated. She was obviously very put off by the interruption of the would-be royal. Luna pulled both of them into a hug. I hope that interruption didn't take too much away from my gift. Why don't you ask my most recently converted Chosen about her qualifications? She suggested. Twilight looked at Candace as Luna released them from the hug. Her eyes seemed to pass over Candace as if reminding herself what she saw the first time. After a moment, Luna saw the light flicker of flames appear on her mane again. Candace seemed to at least appreciate the appraising look from Twilight, her mood returning from its previously dampened state. Twilight walked forward, looking at every inch of her gift once more. Are you really a guard? She asked in a seductive tone. The appreciative smile on Candace's face told Luna that things were back on the track that she desired. Candace looked at Twilight. Night guard or night chosen, if you prefer. Also, much more. I can list my qualifications if you'd like, even give you demonstrations of anything that you choose. Anything? Her mane burned a bit brighter. Ranging from magic experiments in your lab to cleansing most of your ley lines, discussing magic theory to combat training. Or, if you have any suggestions, I will at least try to fulfill them. Candace said in a tone of playfulness. There was just enough seriousness for Twilight to know that she wasn't joking about any of that, though Luna noted that physical intimacy wasn't on the list. That was fine, though. Luna knew that Candace didn't want to rush things and take advantage of the situation. Twilight's wings betrayed her at the mention of Leyline cleansing. She turned to Luna and said, You know just what to get a mare. All of the options seemed to have interested her. What would you like to start with? Candace asked. Twilight seemed rather tempted, but then she backed off and forced herself under control. First things first, we need to get you equipped, introduce you to ponies, and make sure my words don't kill you. Fair enough. In the interest of full disclosure, my qualifications are not only the reason I was chosen as a gift for you. To be completely honest, I have feelings for both you and your betrothed. I believe some of those feelings are returned by her, but she is well aware that they extend to you as well. Candace admitted. Seemed that she didn't want to give Twilight the wrong impression here. Twilight looked at Candace for a moment, seeming to consider her words. How do you have feelings for us already? Luna observed patiently as Candace went over everything that she had before. Her dreams, her feelings that came from them, how her desire to not hurt either of them qualified as being a phobia. Her openness at least seemed to be appreciated by Twilight. Candace seemed as comfortable with Twilight as she was with herself. One thing that caught Luna's attention was Candace lamenting a little bit about choosing the wrong dream when she was given the choice before she became a night guard. She even disclosed Insight's existence, and that resulted in Twilight going and spending some time in the mindscape that Luna bound to Candace for them. Eventually, she came back to physical reality. Twilight thought for a moment after hearing everything. Thank you, Candace. Moving closer to Candace, she whispered. Let's see if you two can earn the same feelings from me. The desire for Candace and Insight as well to accept the challenge was clear in Twilight's eyes. That didn't stop her from blushing at her own words, though. Whispering back into Twilight's ear, Candace offered. 
I had a date idea if you're interested. You and I heading to the clouds with food, a notebook, and your telescope, dinner at the stars as the moon rises, dessert being relaxing together with a book in front of a fireplace, maybe even compare notes and ideas for experiments during it all. There's also nothing to be embarrassed about, my passionately pedagogical, perfectly pretty, precious purple pony princess. You're hired. Twilight said, her voice laced with more than just one type of lust. My Twilight's reaction, Luna had set this up well. Candace had just ticked every box that all of Twilight's fragments had added to their checklists of wants. By how Twilight's wings kept twitching, at least part of her was thinking of having her ley lines cleaned. Luna thought it was even odds if Candace would be trapped in a lab or the bedroom by the end of the week. Now run along and take your gift with you, Luna said with a tender smile. Twilight looked hungrily at Luna, clearly wanting to take her with as well. Just wait until our wedding night, Luna soothed. Twilight claimed one more passionate kiss before lighting her horn and teleporting both herself and her gift away. Luna licked her lips, relishing the taste of the kiss and the tingle of her soon-to-be lover's magical tender touch. Luna mildly scolded herself. She had meant to reclaim the power from the shadow silk bindings that she addressed Candace in, but oh well. It would mean that she would only need a few more cups of coffee, and she did like coffee. Suddenly, blue blood. Noble Guide reclined in the waiting room. In less than an hour, there would be another meeting of the Noble Council. Having these events this late did nothing to hide their existence from Celestia's gaze, but still, it made some of the other nobles believe it did. The door slammed open and a drenched blue blood stomped into the room. His mane was dripping water on the finely crafted carpet. There would be a story about this. He rotated his ears to listen in. A haughty noble that he had not bothered to learn the name of yet spoke first. Blue blood, why are you all wet? His tone was quite an interesting mix of distaste and real curiosity. A tall stallion walked in after the prince, very carefully avoiding the wet patches on the carpet. He wound up in the garden fountain, though who teleported in there, I'm not sure. The magic looked like it must have been Princess Twilight's. Yes, it was her. I'm not sure why she did it, though. Blueblood responded bitterly. Well, what happened just before she tossed you out? The curious one asked. I had gone to the dining hall to talk to Auntie Celestia. I found Princess Twilight and Princess Luna there with one of the hybrids tied up. By the look on their faces, they were quite angry at her. It looked like they were going to send her to Tartarus or something. Blue Blood now had an audience. Every pony was giving him their full attention. He stood a little taller and continued despite his bedraggled state. Princess Luna said that the interruption was unwelcome, and since Ani Celestia wasn't there, I just nodded and turned around to head out. I even complimented them on finally doing something about the abominations of nature. And it was at that point that I found myself right above the fountain. Half the audience is looking at Blue Blood with interest. The other half seemed to be trying to contain themselves until one of them utterly failed to do so. The rest wound up joining in shortly after. Noble himself even had a quiet chuckle, despite how much it pained him. A yellow-coated mare with three money signs as her mark was doing her best to hide a smirk. Oh, Bluey dear, you don't know about Luna and her most recent guard, do you? She said in a playful tone. What would that have to do with that upper crust, and why are you laughing? Blue Blood demanded. Bluey, that hybrid that you saw wasn't on trial or anything. She's Princess Luna's newest chosen. Tell me, was she tied up with shadows? Uppercrust asked in a sweet tone. Blue Blood looked at Uppercrust with suspicion, but nodded. And was said Pony the same one that got released from RGIS? She asked, her anticipation growing. Amazingly, Blue Blood didn't notice the trap that he was galloping into. He gave another nod. I think so? Sweetie, Luna was just taking advantage of her guard status in her harem. She was their toy. If they banished her to anywhere, it would have been one of their bedrooms, not Tartarus. How oh, are you so naive? Upper crust smile would have worked better on a wolf. This caused the rest of the audience to burst out laughing even harder. For once, he found himself in agreement with a room full of nobles. It was quite unsettling. Noble Guide had to give Blue Blood his dues. He didn't freeze. Instead, he launched straight into his tarot. I do not engage in such activities like that! I am a respectable stallion and will not lower myself to those kinds of games! The idea that the princesses would do so is ludicrous! He shouted, and then stormed out. Noble Guy just grinned. Blue Blood was proving to be that perfect mix of arrogance, entitlement, stupidity, and just enough competence that no pony could get rid of him. He would make the perfect scapegoat. As he had brought at least a little bit of amusement to Noble's day, Blue Blood would even get the chance to have some fun in his upcoming role. He had a few letters to write, but Blue Blood would have a gift by morning. That was all of Chapter 29. It took 12 parts to do all of that. This is by far the longest that's ever been posted, but I don't regret it. This was nice. Anywho, let's get on to our noble donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, Jay Tinman, Darkside, and only one thing. 
Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Guy 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Hudzaza, Dosbo, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.